Um, good evening, members of the Judiciary, members of Chartered Accountants Ireland, visitors, guests. Welcome here to Chartered Accountants House. My name is Brendan Lennon and I'm the President for, of Chartered Accountants Ireland. It's my great honour to welcome you, some of you, it's your first time in the building, uh, to the launch tonight of this great book, The uh, Buy Buying and Selling of Insolvent Companies and Businesses in Ireland. Uh, I thought long and hard about how to address you. I know there was a fellow uh, colleague of mine in Chartered Accountants Ireland had an, had an undertaker as a client, and he used to delight in signing off all his letters, yours eventually. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, 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 I thought about saying that actually in responding to some of the emails related to this, but I thought it might create a little bit of gossip. <laughs> so uh, in a room full of insolvency practitioners, I wasn't really quite sure how to open this. Um, as a, we are a profession really born in insolvency, we celebrate our 125th anniversary of the granting of our Royal Charter this year. And uh, that profession of accountancy actually has gone through a number of iterations, but its, it's basic origin <coughs> is one which was born in the insolvency industry. It's possibly one of the areas, reasons why we've uh, expanded, in fact, in the current recession and prospered somewhat. Um, and I'll come back in a little while to our purpose and some of the reasons why this book is immensely important for us. But there were, uh, I was in Scotland recently and there were three, three things that happened to me that I thought were, was relevant to the event tonight, so I thought I'd share them with you. Firstly, I was told a story actually about the Pope's last visit to Scotland. He was in Edinburgh and um, he, he uh, came across a young boy and the young boy said, uh, could, could you pray for my hearing? So the Pope um, knelt down and cupped his ears in his hands and looked towards heaven and talked solemnly for a little while. And then he said, did that help, son? And the boy said, I don't know, my hearing isn't until next week. <laughs> <laughs> Which, the first lesson really is that um, in this area, the law is really important. And to practitioners and in accountancy, uh, the law is very important. And vice versa. And this is one of the few books, actually, that I've come across over the years that has that cross pollination of different disciplines, which is vital in the current environment. Um, the second one actually was, a, was a, 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 an experience I came across in Glasgow, where out of the recession a number of innovative things are happening. So there is a local vet um, has actually bought a, a taxidermist, which happened to be next door uh, to him, and uh, they've now launched a new business, and the slogan is, Whatever happens, you'll get your dog back. <laughs> uh, which tells you that actually every business, no matter what travails it's been through, deserves a second chance. And I think this book is important to that. Um, and actually, one of the unusual things I noticed out there was coming out of a shop, and there was um, two hearses came along the street, and behind them there was a, a lady dressed entirely in black with a pit bull terrier. And, um, and behind her there was in single file 200 people and I thought this, this is really unusual, this is very different to what I've seen in Ireland of, of, from a funeral so I, as I, as in my want to do because I'm a little bit assertive, said can you explain to me what's going on here so the lady said well um, we had an unfortunate accident, I was having a fight with my husband and my dog attacked him and savaged him and my mother-in-law stepped in and the dog did likewise and uh, I said that's, that's that's very, that's very bad, but um, could I borrow your dog? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, join the queue. <laughs> so, uh, it just goes to show that uh, there is a community of practice sometimes that builds up around unfortunate events, and insolvency is one of those things. And so uh, I, I noticed the book here has a, an interesting cover, which is uh, at one part, possibly an empty shopping trolley with some uh, IKEA products in it, perhaps. It might be a pre-pack piece of furniture, not quite sure you can put it away at the, at the imagery of it. But I, I do want to congratulate the authors tonight on what is a very useful text. Um, you know, it must be said that if someone said, you know, there was an accountant, a solicitor and a barrister writing a book, it sounds like the opening to a very poor joke. Um, but I think they have done a terrific job. Um, you know, even though we, to be serious for a while, even though we are a profession born out of insolvency, it's not an area that stands still in any respect. Um, and I think in recent years, even in Ireland, because we are members of what's known as the Consultative Committee of Accountancy Bodies in the UK and Ireland, and we had a discussion about insolvency generally across the UK and Ireland. And there are a number of things happening, including a, a second rev a review by the UK government of pre-PAC legislation and the operation of pre-PAC insolvencies. But even in Ireland, you know, the legislation around NAMA and the IBRC liquidation is quite a significant piece of 
um, legislation that has changed the landscape of insolvency recently. Um, we have been pressing for more regulation in this area. You, you do not really require any qualification or competence actually to act as a receiver in Ireland, which astounds most of the politicians I say this to. And um, they're anxious, I think, to tidy that up because there's an amount of regulation in the UK around practice in insolvency. Um, but there's none in Ireland, north of the border. There's far better regulatory controls about who can practice insolvency, certainly uh, yeah, for the general public. And it wouldn't have escaped your attention that there are a number of people who've been uh, going around the country offering insolvency solutions to people who are extremely vulnerable. And that's something that we as an institute have been very vocal about, uh, trying to ensure that there's more um, uh, regulation around this area. <coughs> going back in history, um, like. We, 125 years is important for us because it was the first public recognition by the state that what we did as accountants, remember, in the insolvency area initially, was difficult and it was important and it was, it was different, difficult enough and important enough we should be given a special company without any shareholders uh, to act uh, to ensure there was a constant supply of people who could do this kind of a difficult and important work and that that would be done in the public interest, not in our individual interest or even in our collective self-interest, but in the public interest. And it's really important in today's environment that there's a public interest focus on the practice of insolvency and there's a strong and steady supply of people who can practice it competently. And I think this book is a significant advance in helping uh, that and also in helping companies in the economy that are in difficulty move forward and do something different and innovative. Um, and it's important that the institutes uh, support this kind of text amongst our practitioners and amongst the broader community. So I commend uh, Bill and Ger and Ted on what is a very good text and a very useful text uh, for practitioners. And I hope that um, having looked through it but not read it in detail because I do think it's a reference book, um, I think I would commend them on it and wish them all the best of luck with it. And finally, to welcome you all to this building. It's our great honour to be associated with it. Jared is a member of ours, a very prominent member of our institute, and commend him on that uh, collaboration across professional lines. So, Bill, could I invite you to make some comments as well, please? Um, and thank you all for your attendance and attention tonight. Thank you. Can you find a team running through the speech this evening? Because uh, the first speech was delivered by a corpsman. Now, as a, it's little known that I'm actually Limerick born. I describe myself as a Limerick born, Dublin, largely Dublin based corpsman with friends in the north to try and cover all the bases. <laughs> but Amy Hayes, who is uh, not a good corp woman, was the one who actually came up with the idea of writing the book and she approached me uh, to do it. Now, as they say, I tend to have a lot on. So the idea of doing it um, solo uh, wasn't immediately entirely attractive. And one of the great secrets of success of writing books, then, done a few at this stage, is to co author. Uh, and the great ambition is that you actually get other people to do most of the work, and you claim most of the credit. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it up to you to decide which way that worked out in practice. But when it came to us, uh, Brendan said, you know, it's, it's one thing to write a, a book from a lawyer's perspective, but you know, you, from a practitioner's point of view, all from the field of insolvency, you could have a bank manager who has a different perspective, and uh, you could have an accountant who has a different perspective. So I thought about it, and I said to Amy, look, I think what is really needed is an all-around kind of a team approach. So we assembled a team, which uh, included, as has been described uh, in the opening remarks, the, the bad joke, the solicitor, the accountant, and the barrister. Now, we actually got some more people as well. Daniel Hughes, who's here as well, collaborated. Uh, he won the sole practitioner of the year this year in the Irish Law Awards as a solicitor. <laughs> um, and Stephen Chung, who unfortunately can't be with us, also assisted. But in the main, the, the board fell in to the lap of Gerard uh, and myself. But I was very conscious, uh, I won't give you the story about. Uh, certain title that I suggested Jared should adopt when he first became partner level in the accountancy world. But uh, I was always very conscious that he a very practical head on his shoulders. And when we approach this as the foreword, and I know you've all read the foreword at this stage, says, uh, you know, the idea was to try to produce a handbook, something that would be of immediate, short, snappy use for people, uh, a reference work that somebody could go to, get the headlines and go from there. But when we actually looked at it, we found that there was an awful lot that wasn't assembled in one body of knowledge. There's an awful lot that wasn't assembled at all. There's an awful lot that wasn't on paper. So when we intended to produce a handbook, we apologised for having <coughs> produced a, a kind of a textbook in part. Some of it is kind of very practically focused. Some of it is more academic. Um, but the, the idea was to, to get a practical approach to it. And there's no more practical head in the accountancy world than I could think of at the time uh, in terms of 
sorting out uh, as per the original title uh, for your uh, reorganisations. So I, I'd actually ask Jeremy to step up to the plate and, and comment on the, um, a few issues that he has to deal with on a daily basis. Thank you, Bill. Um, I suppose uh, those of you who know Bill, you should be very wary of any phone call you get from him because uh, it generally doesn't result in less work for you, it generally results in more work. Um, but I would be the master delegator, so I managed to avoid some of it push some of it back to, to Bill. But uh, I, I'm, not a, I'm not an author. It's my first time <coughs> being involved in writing a book. Uh, it was hugely informative for me to be involved in it. And, and part of the, the motivation for me to get involved really was what we've seen in the last number of years in terms of companies and businesses that have got into difficulty and keeled over for a want of quick, practical advice in terms of getting them to the next safe place. Um, and, and that was something that the, it came down to very much the individual as to whether you had access to that information and uh, that resource. And I suppose one of the things that has driven all of us really to, to, to write the book was in the, to give that base for people to go to, to uh, activate transactions on a quick basis, but in a proper uh, basis to make sure it was done properly, to go to the, to the, to the area where people have that knowledge or had experience before. So what we were trying to do was bring out the practical experience of the law and the practice around it, and that's something that we've worked hard on, and hopefully we've done okay in that, in terms of helping people on that side. Um, it has been uh, hugely enjoyable, and uh, great uh, credit given to both Bill and Ted for keeping me on the straight and narrow. Because uh, if you're more of a talker than an author, it's a very difficult thing to reduce it down to paper. But we got there eventually. Um, but I think also when you look at um, hopefully the benefit that people will get from the book in terms of being able to save businesses and jobs and organisations by being able to implement, I think that would be, that would be helpful. Um, and maybe on that point, I'll hand over to Ted to talk about some of the burdens that people have to deal with in trying to move from that difficult place to a new safe place. So, thank you. Thanks, Chair. Um, one group of people haven't been recognized here who are in attendance this evening, that's my friends and former colleagues in the media. And uh, I suppose anybody who's looked at the fate and performance of media companies both here and abroad in the last number of years can't be surprised that a former journalist is interested in insolvency. So there's a particular skill set that yours truly may unwittingly have brought to this. And one of the things that we, as Jer was saying, that we looked at in terms of saving otherwise viable businesses, um, we looked at the obstacles that have been placed upon otherwise attractive, forward-going companies and enterprises. And we looked in particular at leases and from my experience in the last number of years in the courts, um, many of you will have dealt with this as well. Huge burdens have been placed upon particularly the SME sector. And we devoted a lot of time in the book to looking at the practical options available, particularly to examiners and to liquidators who come to deal with companies that are burdened by Celtic Tiger era leases that were entered into at a period where in 2005, 2006, Neither the tenant nor the landlord could have envisaged a 50% peak to trough fall in the, the level of rental um, income uh, deriving from any properties, particularly in this city. So we were looking at, at ways in which we can give practical advice uh, to practitioners and to people who are involved in companies who seek the advice of solicitors, accountants, barristers even, uh, in times of difficulty. And I suppose if you look at the area of examinership, the question of the right of um, an examiner to uh, seek the orders of the High Court to repudiate leases. That's a big change that came about in the last two or three years and it has lifted a burden off a lot of companies. And so it's an example, I hope, of a kind of practical um, piece of law and also commerce that has been identified which will allow people to strive and to achieve the result of saving a business that has, through, in many cases, no fault of the entrepreneurs themselves become burdened with out-of-date, hugely onerous obligations that are no longer relevant to the circumstances in which they find themselves today. Um, and in terms of uh, other aspects of it, we have um, a large section of the book which is dealt, uh, devoted to employees and employees' issues. I think anybody who's, who's had a quick, very quick run through the book will see that whereas a lot of um, employment law textbooks obviously deal with employment law, and you have business and insolvency books who deal with those practical issues. There are very few that bring all those areas, those strands together. And that was one of the things that we really de devoted ourselves to in trying to offer a full, if you like, the full gamut or a full, full portfolio of options to people to give them a good overview of the issues that they will inevitably deal with when coming to restructure 
a business with a view hopefully to sell it on as a going concern. And that's where Bill Hooliton came in because he did a lot of work on the employees aspect and I'm going to throw the ball back to you. Well, if you as he said, uh, you know, if you look at the, the book, there's no less than four separate chapters on the employment because the fundamental objective is to try and preserve the business and that includes saving jobs. And that is the, the focus. Um, there's a, another new era dawning now with the examinership light, so to speak, for the <coughs> circuit court. Uh, but that's another commercial for another night. We'll save that one. Um, and but as the, with any closing uh, regime, when it comes to the closing credits, you have to thank the people. And in my dedication to the book, I dedicated this book uh, to my partners who uh, allowed me the indulgence occasionally of uh, not being there all the time to, to attend the things. And they uh, supported me in lots of ways, including acting as cameraman tonight. John May, the managing partner, was managing the camera. Um, but all, equally, it, it was applicable. Now, barristers of necessity are sole practitioners. Ted talked about uh, his journalistic background, and that was one of the reasons why I chose Ted, even though he wasn't a corporal like Jar. Uh, we had to make him an honorary corporal for the purpose of the project. Um, but Ted, as a, as a lawyer, in my experience is, is unusual in the sense that he's a great ability, the journalist's ability, to sum up and give you the headlines. If you want the full newspaper after that, no better why. They'd say in Cork. Um, but he didn't have the backup of a, of a team behind him. I had the backup of a team behind me. Uh, Amy Shine, for example, handled uh, employment law in our office and was a great help in the management. Jerry equally had uh, a team behind <coughs> him uh, in PWC, so he actually subcontracted most of it. <laughs> <laughs> because when Jer Jerry's into brevity, when it comes to being slightly more expensive, he'd, he'd like someone to give him a briefing memorandum, which might have made its way into early drafts of some but uh, I'd like to thank all of you for coming. Uh, there is, for as long as you can afford to stay, there's uh, food and drink, and I hope you enjoy it.